Hey guys, welcome to Brick Hub. This is another minifigure collection video. As always, if you guys like this video, please give it a like. Please comment below to share your opinions. Please check out my other videos. And finally, please subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. As you can see, this is my DC Super Heroes Heroes and Villains minifigure collection. Let's get started. So let's kick things off with the Super Heroes minifigure collection. I will try to go through this as quickly as possible so you guys don't get too bored. And unless the character has an alternate expression that is very significant, I will not be showing the alternate expressions. So first up, this is Superman, or Clark Kent, or Kal-El. This is the pretty standard comic book Superman that we've been getting for a few years now. Hopefully he's going to get updated with some printing on his legs to uh, show his tights and his boots. Overall, pretty solid minifigure though. Underneath his cape, he has some nice back muscle printing, as well as laser heat vision as his alternate expression. Next up is Batman, or Bruce Wayne. This is the same Batman that we've been getting for a few years now. I'm pretty sure that this Batsuit is supposed to reflect his appearance in the New 52 comics. Underneath his mask, he has the standard white band, as well as some nice back muscle printing. This is Wonder Woman, otherwise known as Diana Prince. She is an Amazon and the final member of the Justice League Trinity. She has some pretty nice printing all around as well as a nice printed hairpiece to reflect her Amazon crown. This is Arthur Curry, the King of Atlantis, another founding member of the Justice League. He's probably tied with Batman and the Flash as one of my favorite superheroes. This is Green Lantern otherwise known as Hal Jordan. There are other Green Lanterns, however, this particular version is uh, Hal Jordan because he is the founding member of the Justice League. This is The Flash, otherwise known as Barry Allen. He is also a founding member of the Justice League and he is best friends with Hal Jordan. This is Martian Manhunter, otherwise known as John Jones. He is a Martian that is the final founding member of the Justice League. Here's a quick look at the back torso printing under the cape. This is Jon Stewart as the Green Lantern. He's also another one of my favorite DC superheroes, and this is an excellent minifigure. He was only available in the exclusive Build Your Own Adventure DC Superheroes book. This is Hawkgirl, otherwise known as Kendra Saunders. She features nice printing all around, but no dual molded legs. However, she also has interchangeable wings to reflect an open appearance or a closed appearance. This is the Green Arrow, otherwise known as Oliver Queen. He is also one of the original Justice League members, even though this is one of the new 52 renditions of him. He has a nice rubber hood piece too that is kind of hanging off his back. This is Hawkman, also known as Carter Hall. He is the final original Justice League member. Not a founding member, but part of the original JLA. This is Plastic Man, also a member of the Justice League. This minifigure was available to those who pre-ordered the deluxe version of one of the LEGO Batman games. Excellent minifigure all around. He's a shapeshifter in the DC Comics. And if you guys want to learn more about this character, I highly recommend reading the Injustice Year 2 comic. This is Supergirl, who is Superman's cousin. She is both technically older and younger than Superman because she escaped Krypton at the same time. However, she was caught in a time loop in which she never aged, so thus she is both. Like Superman, she also has some nice back muscle printing as well as some heat vision eyes. This is the more classic Green Arrow in his Silver Age slash Golden Age outfit. He almost looks a little bit like Robin Hood. This minifigure was available in the Justice League Anniversary Party set. This is Cyborg. He was formerly a Teen Titans, but now in the New 52, he's considered a founding member of the Justice League. This is probably my favorite Cyborg minifigure that is available currently. He is available in the Dark Side Invasion set. This is one of the newer minifigures that LEGO has released. This is Firestorm, the combination of Dr. Martin Stein and Ronnie Raymond. This is just an updated Flash that was recently released in the Killer Frost Lego set. And this is Cyborg from the same set. He's also just an update, but I kind of like this minifigure because he kind of looks to me like he would belong in the Teen Titans as the Cyborg. The other Cyborg looks too much like the Justice League version of him. This is Katana. 
She wasn't really part of the Justice League, but in the New 52, she is part of the Justice League of America, which, in, according to the New 52, was a distinct team that worked for the government as opposed to Batman, Wonder Woman, or Superman. She also features nice arm printing on her right arm, as well as nice dual molded legs. This is El Dorado, a member of the Super Friends. This is a character that I'm not entirely familiar with because I'm not a big Super Friends fan. However, if his appearance in a LEGO set is any indication of more Super Friends to come, LEGO, please make a Captain Atom. Here's a look at his back torso printing as well as his alternate expression and the fact that he has dual molded legs. This is Superboy. This is a clone of Superman and he served as a member of the Teen Titans. This is Starfire, otherwise known as Coriander, a princess from a foreign planet and another member of the Teen Titans. Underneath her hair, she has a nice torso print as well as an alternate expression that shows her in a little bit of distress. This is Beast Boy, the Teen Titans shapeshifter. He can shapeshift into any existing animal. He was also a member of the original Doom Patrol, which is why he wears his purple and black outfit. And the final Teen Titans member to have been made in LEGO, this is Raven. This is the daughter of Trigon and a member of the Teen Titans. This minifigure was only available in the Dimensions pack, and she also is reflecting her appearance in the Teen Titans Go TV show, which is why her eyes are a little bit different than the standard LEGO minifigure. This is her alternate expression underneath the mask to maybe show a little bit of an angry face. This is Nightwing, or Dick Grayson. He was Batman's first Robin, a circus acrobat, who tragically lost his parents in an accident. Now he's the vigilante Nightwing that serves alongside Batman, taking control of the regions of Bloodhaven. This is Damian Wayne, Batman's son, also the fourth Robin. He was trained by the League of Assassins under Ra's al Ghul and Talia al Ghul. This is Red Hood. This was Jason Todd and he was the second Robin under Batman. However, he was uh, put away by the Joker uh, many years before, and then he returned as a masked vigilante Red Hood. This is Cosmic Boy, one of the founding members of the Legion of Superheroes. This is just one of two Legion of Superheroes minifigures that DC has currently allowed LEGO to produce, and I hope we get more of them because I would love to have a full lineup of the original Legion of Superheroes. This is Lightning Lad, another founding member of the Legion of Superheroes. As you can see on his arm, he has a nice Legion of Superheroes ring tattoo, as well as some excellent printing all around. He also features a pretty excellent alternate expression with some gold printing on it. This is Crypto the Superdog. This is Superman's sidekick. And he's pretty excellent minifigure, not much articulation because he can only turn his head, but he has a very nice printed collar that has the Superman logo. This is Wonder Dog, the Wonder Twins assistant dog, and it's a pretty nice minifigure all around and also very usable outside of the context of DC superheroes. Again, I don't really know too much about the Super Friends, however, this is just a good dog minifigure. Starting off some of the Batman themed minifigures, this is the Adam West Classic TV Batman. He has an excellent print on his face to show the lines that were on his mask in the show, as well as a nice torso print. Next up is the Robin from the Classic TV series. This is the Dick Grayson version of Robin. He also sports a nice shortened yellow cape. This is the armored Batman from the Batman vs Superman movie. He has a nice rack on the back of his suit so he can hold some utilities as well as some nice glow-in-the-dark eyes underneath his mask. He also features some excellent printing that would never be shown because it's hidden under the armor. This is Lobster Lovin' Batman from the Lego Batman Movie Series 1 minifigure set. This minifigure has some nice printing all around including the legs as well as the side of the arms. This is a very usable torso and legs this is Fairy Batman, also from the Series 1 minifigure series. He has some nice dual molded legs and some excellent printing all around, including dual molded arms with front arm printing. This is Easter Bunny Batman from the Toys R Us exclusive Bricktober minifigure pack. This is one of my favorite bat suits that has ever been made and an excellent figure all around. This is Tiger Suit Batman. Not much can be said here, but some excellent printing all around and on the arms. I love when LEGO does arm printing. This minifigure was available in a battle pod. 
This is Scuba Suit Batman. This minifigure was available in the Batcave break-in Lego Batman movie set. Thus, he does not have a face print, it's just a plain white minifigure head, which can be interchanged with a normal printed Batman head. This is Tartan Batman, which was available alongside a book in a minifigure book combo pack. This minifigure also sports a nice back torso printing as well as dual molded legs. This is Glam Metal Batman, which has Batman looking like Gene Simmons from Kiss. He does not have any back printing, but he has a nice silver print of a bat on his mask, as well as some excellent printing on the dual molded legs. This is Pirate Batman, which is another minifigure that was available only with a minifigure slash book combo pack. This is his back torso printing as well as his alternate expression. This is the Clan of the Cave Batman, which is another minifigure that was available in the Lego Batman Movie Series 1 minifigure series. This is the Money Suit Batman, which is also available in the Toys R Us exclusive Bricktober minifigure pack. It has some nice printing all around, including the sides of the arms as well as the sides of the legs. This is Space Batman. He comes with a nice set of plastic wings just like Hawkman. And similarly, he also has another set of wings to show open wings. This is Wizard Batman, which was the third minifigure that was available in the Bricktober exclusive Batman minifigure pack. And this is Gladiator Batman, or Roman Centurion Batman, not really sure what the official LEGO minifigure name is, but this is the final of the four minifigures in the LEGO Batman movie Bricktober pack. This is Desert Batman from the Ray Jal Ghoul Lazarus Pit Lego set. On the back side of his torso, he has some nice exposed gold printing to show some of his armor plating. And this is MC Batman, another minifigure that was available in the Batcave break-in. He comes with a nice gold mic. Underneath the cape, he has a nice gold back torso with some little specks of sparkles. This is Excalibur Batman from the Lego Batman movie Dimensions Fun Pack. On the back of his torso, the nice yellow and blue print wraps around his body. This is Gas Mask Batman, which was available in the Scarecrow Fear Toxin Lego set. Underneath his mask, he has a nice unique print that is exclusive to this particular Batman. And on the other side of his head, he has an actual face with an expression and the green eyes. And he has some nice back printing on his torso. This is Tears of a Batman, which is a play on the song Tears of a Clown. This minifigure was available in a poly bag alongside the Disco Batman. Here is Disco Batman. As you can see, he sports a pair of gold roller blades, as well as some chest hair showing through his nice white shirt. And unlike the Tears of a Batman bat suit, this one has some back printing. This is the Raging Bat Suit, which is a play on Raging Bull. It has some nice purple boxing gloves and he has a nice dual molded legs. If you turn the minifigure around, you can see that he has some nice back printing and you can really appreciate the dual molded legs. This is the classic Lego Batman movie, Batman, which pretty much looks like the Michael Keaton version of Batman. Pretty plain, but pretty excellent minifigure all around. This is Vacation Batman from the Lego Batman Series 1 movie minifigure series. Unlike most Batman, he has an actual face underneath the mask and he has a nice dual molded pair of legs and some printing all around the body. And finally, this is the LEGO Dimensions Batman. This minifigure is kind of unique in that it uses the New 52 torso. However, it uses the classic Batman head. And finally, for the final bat suit, we have Kiss Kiss Tuxedo Batman. Now, this is technically not an official minifigure. This was taken off the keychain, but for the purpose of play and the purpose of just displaying on a collection, I think he looks pretty fantastic. I really do hope we get a normal minifigure version of him soon though. This is Bruce Wayne in the form of Adam West. This is from the classic TV series set. And this of course is his trusty sidekick, Dick Grayson, also from the classic TV series. And this is Alfred, their butler, and this is also a version of Alfred in the classic TV series form. This is Robin from the Lego Batman movie minifigure series 1. He has a can of shark repellent, which is a reference to the classic TV series. Not a terrific minifigure, but the accessory is fantastic. This is Pink Power Batgirl, also from the Series 1 Batman movie minifigure series. Nice minifigure all around with some cool pink parts, and it features an alternate expression, which is highly unusual for a minifigure series. Here's a look at that alternate expression. This is Commissioner Gordon from the Lego Batman movie minifigure series 1. 
he, this is a really cool minifigure because he has some really nice dual molded sleeves with printing on them and the torso is pretty excellently done. And finally, to round off the heroes, we have Barbara Gordon as the new Commissioner Gordon. Just like her father, she has some really nice arm printing and it's just a pretty excellent minifigure in general because it looks like it can be pretty interchangeable with other heads as well. Now that we're done with the superheroes, let's get started with some of the villains. Personally, for me, I think that having a good villain makes a better hero, and I think that's why Batman and a lot of the Justice League members are such good comic book characters, because they have such good villains. Let's get started off with Killer Moth. So starting off the villains, we have Killer Moth. This is the comic book version of him, not the one that was in the Lego Batman movie. And overall, I think this is an excellent minifigure, particularly because of the really cool head mold. He also has side leg printing, which is unusual. Underneath his mask, he has a nice pair of goggles as well as a little bit of a frantic expression on the other side. This is Kirk Langstrom, or the Man Bat, a guy who created a serum to try to cure deafness, but then ended up becoming a little bit of a super villain. Underneath his head, he features a little bit of a frightened alternate expression. This is Talia al Ghul, the daughter of Rage al Ghul, and a love interest of Batman in the comics and video games. She's also the mother of Damian Wayne. This is Poison Ivy, otherwise known as Dr. Pamela Isley, one of Batman's oldest foes. She has some nice printing all around and comes with a nice green whip to show some of her plant powers in work. This is Selina Kyle, or the Catwoman. She is also another one of Batman's love interests from the comics, and she's also kind of like an anti-hero in modern age comics. Underneath her mask, she features a nice printed pair of goggles, and on the other side, she actually has a face expression. This is Bane, one of my favorite Batman villains of all time. He's kind of underrated in the sense that everyone kind of thinks he's just a big dummy that just really gets strong, but he's actually a mastermind technician and a mercenary. And this is the Riddler, another one of Batman's original foes. Nice printing all around, excellent minifigure, but he does not feature an alternate expression because his hat would not cover it. He also has a nice printed question mark on his hat. And this is Mr. Freeze, otherwise known as Victor Freeze. He's also kind of like an anti-hero villain kind of thing. I mean, he uses his science and he does the things that he does to try to find a cure for his frozen wife. Underneath his helmet, you can see that he has a nice metallic torso print on the front and the back. And this, of course, is the Joker, probably the most popular Batman villain of all time and the most recognizable. This is one of the Dimensions Packs minifigures, and I have to say, it looks pretty good and it is a very good representation of the character. This is Rej al Ghul, the father of Talia al Ghul, and one of the teachers of Batman in the many years of Batman's training. He also is the leader of the League of Assassins. If you look at the other side of his face, you can see that he is now rejuvenated and has green eyes to reflect his leaving the Lazarus Pit. This of course is Harley Quinn, otherwise known as Dr. Harleen Quinzel, who was the psychiatrist that was trying to help the Joker in Arkham Asylum, but instead ended up falling in love with him and becoming more like him. Most people don't know this, but this character is actually not from the comics. She was originally from the Batman animated TV series with Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. This is Scarecrow, another one of my favorite Batman villains. He uses fear toxins to make his enemies scared of him, and over the years, Batman has kind of developed an immunity and is always trying to uh, get one step ahead of Scarecrow, but Scarecrow constantly evolves his fear toxins to defeat the Batman. This is Deadshot, most notably known for his involvement with the Suicide Squad. This is also one of my favorite characters in DC, period, because of his involvement with the Suicide Squad and Secret Six and as a Batman villain. This minifigure has some really nice printing on both arms showing both his wrist guns as well as leg printing. This is Captain Boomerang showing his appearance in the Suicide Squad comics, another one of my favorite teams and I really hope LEGO continues to make more Suicide Squad members. I know the movie didn't do as well as they would have liked, but this is an excellent minifigure. And this is Harley Quinn from the Suicide Squad. You might notice that she's different because she has the blue and red pattern, and that's because this is more of a modern age Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn didn't really become part of the Suicide Squad until New 52. This is the mutant leader from the Dark Knight Returns series. It's an excellent comic series, and you guys should all definitely read it if you guys enjoy DC comic books. 
Now this is a minifigure I was not ever expecting to get made, but because of the Lego Batman movie, we were able to get one. This of course is Condiment King from the Lego Batman movie. He's also actually from the comics, and he's one of the more obscure characters that I would not expect most fans to know. Really only, really hardcore Batman fans like myself would even recognize him. But this is a really excellent representation of him. And he, he also features an alternate expression, which shows like that maybe he's been munching on some cheese puffs or something. And this is a Kabuki twin, famous for their appearance in The Batman TV Show. Not Batman animated series, but The Batman. And I remember seeing this character um, on the WB Kids uh, show in the mornings. And I can't believe they made this minifigure either, because they really only appeared in the show. I'm pretty sure this has never appeared in the comics. There's always two of them, and they are the Penguin's henchmen. And this is Tarantula, a character who is pretty interesting, and I, I'm kind of surprised that Lego even made her because she is a little bit adult-themed. She's a vigilante that operates in Bloodhaven, but she's a little bit more extreme, and thus Nightwing, who is kind of the guy in charge of Bloodhaven. He kind of tells her to stand down, which she doesn't, and for that reason, I kind of put her with the villains. This is Magpie, another pretty insignificant Batman villain, uh, not really that important and people really probably didn't understand what her issue was in the Batman movie because she didn't really have a big role, but Magpie is a Batman villain that is basically just attracted to shiny things and that's about all there is to know about this character. This is Condiment King, another one of the very obscure uh, Batman villains that was made strictly because of the Lego Batman movie. Just like Condiment King, I'm very surprised that they ever made him, but I'm glad they did because this is such a cool minifigure. Underneath his helmet, you can see that he has a bit of a frantic expression on the other side, showing his funny buck teeth. This is the Lego Batman movie version of the Riddler. He has really great question mark printing all around his body, including his arms. And I'm kind of glad that they actually gave him hair for this particular model. This is the Eraser from the Lego Batman movie minifigure series. And this is another pretty obscure character. I really only know him for having teamed up with uh, Kite Man and Calendar Man uh, once a long time ago. but. It's a pretty great minifigure in the sense that he has some really great printing all around his body. This is Orca, uh, another pretty obscure Batman villain. And I'm not such a big fan of this minifigure, but I am glad that they're making very obscure Batman villains. And we wouldn't have this unless it was for the Lego Batman movie. This is Catman of the Secret Six. He features nice dual molded legs, claws, as well as his iconic three slashes across the chest. This is March Harriet from the Lego Batman movie minifigure series. This figure has some pretty excellent printing all around, but just like Tarantula, I have to wonder what compelled Lego to make this minifigure. Don't get me wrong, I'm very happy that we even have this character, but this is a pretty adult minifigure, honestly, if you know the background of the character. This is Mime from the minifigure series. Probably not a lot of people got very excited for this character, but she did appear in a very iconic comic back in the day. And she was kind of supposedly being helped out by Batman, but then she ends up kind of turning on him as he's trying to pick her off the ground. Great character, though, and great minifigure. This is the calculator. And while he does not look anything like he would in the comics, if you take his suit off, you can see that he's a lot more like the comics underneath. So it's pretty nice of LEGO to do that. They make him look kind of like the comics in the inside, and on the outside he looks just as he would in the LEGO Batman movie. This is Zebra Man, and I have to say, this minifigure has just some amazing detail all around. I absolutely love how they got the zebra stripes all around the body and on the head. I mean... This is just a terrific minifigure and an excellent representation of the character. This is the Zodiac from the Lego Batman movie minifigure series. And I actually don't know too much about this character other than the fact that he's teamed up with Kite Man and Calendar Man from time to time. But he has some really nice gold printing all around. And this, of course, is Lex Luthor, one of the most iconic villains in all of comic book history. And he's still pretty plain. I mean, he's pretty much just a big businessman. That is also evil, I guess. Great minifigure, and all the parts are very interchangeable with other figures. This is Killer Frost, one of the recent DC supervillains that LEGO has produced. 
Excellent minifigure, however I would have preferred to have some leg printing on this one, but I am glad to get another member of the Suicide Squad. This is the Cheetah, uh, Wonder Woman villain, and just like Killer Frost, this is one of the newer minifigures, and while it is a great minifigure, it also lacks leg printing. However, you know, more Legion of Doom cannot hurt, and I cannot wait to see what LEGO does for the future of this team. This is Captain Cold, a very famous Flash villain, and the leader of the Rogues. The Rogues are the team that pretty much try to fight against the Flash and everything that he does, and this is just such a great representation of the character. This is Kite Man, another one of the ridiculous enemies that Batman has had over the years. I'm very happy that they made him, and it's just it's just so terrific, honestly. I love the way they gave him this, this kite backpack thing here with a nice harness. This is Mr. Freeze from the Lego Batman movie. This is, yeah, I mean, it's an okay minifigure. I do like the fact that they give him a glass dome, which you cannot see too well in this video, but it makes him kind of look more like the classic animated series, Mr. Freeze. And finally, we have this calendar man that I've been talking about for so long. This is such a great minifigure, and I'm so glad that he was made. While I would have preferred that they made him in the more video game-esque Arkham series calendar man, but honestly, this is fine. This is such a great character, and he looks more like the cartoon. This is another Legion of Doom member. This is the Black Manta, an Aquaman villain. I'm pretty surprised that they made him considering the popularity of Aquaman. I really feel like Aquaman's pretty underrated, but he has some terrific villains like Black Manta and Ocean Master, and I, I really hope they make an Ocean Master eventually. I mean, I feel like they've already got all the molds that they need. Here's another Flash Rogue. This is Professor Zoom or Reverse Flash. Pretty much the colors are just reverse colors of Flash, and the lightning symbol on his chest is backwards, but this is a great, great character. And this is the Trickster, another Rogues member, and the last ro Rogue that uh, LEGO has produced. He came with a movie, and uh, this is a pretty great and accurate representation of the character. I can't believe how much detail they actually got right down to his plaid pants. And this is the Penguin from the LEGO Batman movie. However, you might notice that the printing makes him look just as he would in the second Batman movie of the Michael Keaton Batmans, and I... I absolutely love the fact that they made this minifigure. I mean, his printing and the detail makes him look so much the way he did in that Batman movie. This is Power Suit Lex Luthor, except the Power Suit is kind of just printed on. And I actually prefer it this way instead of with the mold. And, this, I mean, just look at that back spine detail. Just really excellent printing. However, the face is pretty much the same as all the other Lex Luthers before him. But, eh, good minifigure. This is Deathstroke, another one of my very favorite villains. This is a classic Teen Titans villain, and he has some really great printing all around, even on the back of his head, as well as dual molded legs. I absolutely love this character, and most people don't realize this, but Deadpool is actually a parody of this character. His, Deadpool's name is Wade Wilson, while this is Slade Wilson. Any similarity there? And this is Sinestro, the former Green Lantern that turned in his Green Lantern ring to trade in for a yellow one, starting the Sinestro Corps. He's also a member of the Injustice League and the Legion of Doom. This is Lobo, the intergalactic bounty hunter. This is kind of like DC's Ghost Rider, except he's a lot cooler. He also has this excellent The Main Man print on the back of his jacket, which is his nickname from the comics. This is Harley Quinn from the Lego Batman minifigure series, and this is her in her nurse outfit, and it's kind of weird. I, I kind of would have preferred that they gave her a actual flesh tone face before she kind of went all crazy with the Joker, but it has some really great printing for the torso. Starting off the classic TV series villains, we have the Egghead. This character was never in the comics, but I think he was kind of brought back to relevancy by the Lego Batman movie, and uh... I mean, it's pretty plain. I mean, not an amazing minifigure, honestly, but the fact that it was made is pretty awesome to me. This is Mr. Freeze, and this minifigure was only available in a poly bag, and this is, I mean, just such a cool minifigure. I love that he has the little toy dial on the back of his suit, and a very accurate printing of the classic TV series Mr. Freeze. This is the classic TV series Penguin, and honestly, this is probably the worst classic TV series minifigure because... 
He's, I mean, pretty much just the color swap of the past penguins. I mean, even the face print, I'm pretty sure it's the same as the others. Overall, I mean, if there weren't all the other penguins, I would say this is a good minifigure, but this was a lousy reprint, basically. This, of course, is King Tut, who is also another villain that really is only part of the classic TV series Batman uh, lore, but he was made relevant again with the Lego Batman minifigure series 1. This is the classic TV series Catwoman. Unfortunately, we only get this particular Catwoman from the classic TV series. I really would have liked to get uh, two other versions because I, I believe there were three Catwoman actresses. Underneath her mask though, or underneath her hairpiece, she has an alternate expression. The alternate expression kind of takes off her mask altogether, and it's pretty nice to have a plain female head. This is classic TV Riddler, and like the Penguin, he's a little bit disappointing, but I mean, he's pretty accurate. I mean, the character in the show was probably one of the most plain looking characters. And of course, we have the classic TV Joker. I absolutely love this minifigure because of all the detail they got, even down to the painted over mustache. He also has a really nice alternate expression that kind of seems like he's saying, oh Batman, I gotcha. And finally, to round off the villains, we have this Killer Croc. Now this is a big fig, it's not really a minifigure, and for that reason, I don't know. I mean, it's cool, but I, I kind of wish I had the original minifigure size Killer Croc. I still need to hunt it down, it was such a nice minifigure. But as far as the design goes, this minifigure has some really cool designing and it looks pretty accurate to the character. So thanks for sticking it out with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please give it a like. Please comment below, share your opinions, let me know what you guys think of this collection. And finally, please subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Bye.